Do you have to speak really out or no, how, to, how, to, how, to, how do you want it? Like just normal. do whatever the fuck you want, bro. It doesn't really fuck you, <clears> anyway. <throat> just do it, you oh, want, bro. All right. Fucking live your life. Oh, boys, we had a weekend, didn't we? Oh, we on already? Yeah, we're on. We had a weekend. <laughs> fuck right off. <laughs> I don't even have a voice anymore. Which is weird for you because you're pretty fucking well versed in the party life. Well, I've just held the thing pinned since Thursday, so I'm rough. I think there's only one person that sent it harder than you did, and it was Brownie. 100% Brownie. So, my weekend award for... Nah, Brownie, I reckon Bushy was up there too. Fuck, Bushy had a crack, but he didn't ride much. Yeah, but he was he was commentating shit, so... Yeah, but look, sorry, Bushy, you're, you're third. third. Yeah, you're third. <laughs> and Harry's just going to slip through and take us all out. Who's that? No, 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 we're talking about... It's a it's a riding and party yeah. combined. Oh, yeah. Like, Harry, in terms of life, probably fucks us all up. Dude, Harry rang me last night trying to get me to go out. <laughs> That's what He's I'm like, saying. He's like, oh, dude, come down, just... I'm like, are you fucking serious? Beep, beep, <laughs> beep. And then Bushy... And straight after that, Bushy rang me. And I was like, dude, I legitimately can't do... Like, no. Yeah. No. Nah. Well, my weekend, I'm going to start off by talking about me. Um, the vampire the vampire because I only really come out at night I was fucking damaged man like so let's say alright we'll do a proper we'll start this like it's Hang a on, real how podcast how about you like introduce yeah 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 that's what I'm saying nah. yeah well, so let's, let's talk about the vampire for a minute nah. <laughs> let, <let's, laughs> he was gonna choke everyone out oh god <laughs> it was fucking weird um, so we'll do a little intro to the podcast welcome to the to the podcast Matty Phillips it's actually been a long time coming man you're <laughs> You're a re- you're a requested guy, believe it or not. I, don't, I think you like downplay your requestedness, but I've had a lot of people ask me to get you on. And then the podcast slut himself, Sam Moore, who's been on, I feel like every episode of the podcast, or has at least been mentioned. Um, <laughs> but we thought uh, Matty flies back to Tassie um, to do whatever the fuck a 27-time world champion does when he goes back to Tassie. Four wheel drives mostly. Yeah, so <laughs> we're like, oh, we got to get, we got to get him into the uh, into the podcast. So, Matty, welcome, bro. Thank you. It's good to be here. I've been watching a few. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's let's ask a few questions. I'm a man of few words, as as you know. That's probably why I'm a bit requested. So let let's have a let's have a chat and see what I'm all about. Yeah. So this weekend, pull that a bit closer too. You can flatten that. Yeah, just move it to you. You don't have to go to it. Yeah, I don't like objects near my mouth, but that's cool. <laughs> Except for food, as, as we all know. What about yeah. beers? Yeah, come on, mate. Formally okay. Can we do a quick shout out to Young Henry's too? They kind of fueled our weekend, didn't they, really? Yeah. Yeah, Matt from Young Henry's. Love your work. Yeah, Kempy. Uh, you yeah. fucking lord. Fantastic. So basically what went down, Maddie's about to fly out, so we've got an hour and a half to talk about all of the good times that went down at... Red Bull Day in the Dirt is the first one that came down under. I've been to a few of them in the US. So I was pretty stoked that they bought it over here. Um, so this is our wrap up. And like I said, uh, MVP of that. It wasn't like a formal trophy that they handed out. So this is going to be a Gypsy Tales trophy. Um, first place was Brownie for the party versus riding ratio. Mm hmm. Brownie wins from Brown's Graphics. Your boy Sam Moore come in in a fucking very, very hotly contended second place. Nah, because Brownie nearly fell into a fire. No, he did fall into a fire. I pulled him out of the fire at one point on Saturday, right. well, Friday night. There you go. And, uh, and then, yeah, we're going to say Bushy third. He just didn't do enough riding. He fucking partied. He was in the middle of every single fight that happened too. Um, <laughs> and then... Yeah, no, no, no. He and got, all the weirdness. Got, no, he was pulling people apart. Not, yeah, the, yeah, no, not, he was in the, the middle mi- of yeah, fight, yeah, 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 yeah. We should clarify that. He's but, de- um, a definite lover, not a hater. Yeah, no, he's the, he's a man. So how was your weekend, Matt? Was it, what did you expect going into Day in the Dirt? Well, as some of the listeners may know that Sam Moore organised the whole weekend for me. So I didn't have high expectations for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't really in, uh, fill me in with anything. He's like, oh, man, you need to come up and do this event. It's going to be sick. Book your flight. Here's the, here's the details. Jump on. Which, which I didn't look at. You know, I, was, I just presumed it was Thursday. So I checked out Wednesday night what was happening. So <laughs> that's that's sort of how I roll as well, which is cool. Um, Yamaha gave you a bike. Ray gave me a bike. You know. Shout out to the boys. Shout out to Raymond himself he's a good guy and uh so yeah got on the plane thursday thursday yeah 
Yeah. It's a long time ago. <laughs> well, it feels like, like a long time. Three yeah. weeks yeah. ago, but it was actually not that long. And uh, yeah. as expected, Sam was late getting to the, getting to the airport. Yeah, because I was busy getting his gear and his graphics and stuff sorted. You know. Yeah, right. So, getting life sorted, so, and yeah, he, he rings me just before he gets there. Oh shit! The bike is in a crate. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no. I did see that. Yeah. So he goes, "Oh, ring Ray and see if he'll just put it together." Just like so, I ring him like. I'll try this one. I said, oh, is there any chance you could get the battery charge for me? <laughs> you know, really try and smooth in, you know, a bit yeah, of spit. Yeah. So, uh, no, <laughs> not a chance. Sure just, just, just jump start it. And um, apparently you can't even jump start them. You've got to, uh, got to actually charge. You've got to charge and it's lithium battery. You've got to wake up the brain or something. But yeah, so. It was all good. We uh, we got there and got the thing built and it was all good. And <laughs> shout out to Cam Williams for oiling the filter. Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> many hands. No, it, was... it took it took many hands to get you on track. So why like what have you been doing since like in Australia? Like you how many how many world titles have you won now? So I won four world titles. Okay. So that's a fair bit. Oh better than most. That's four you'd years say, you'd, you'd of say, being the best dude in the world. You'd say probably better than most. Yeah, yeah. Well definitely better than what Sam and I like if we put our credentials oh, together. I want a C grade title in Tassie. Well, well as we know. Maddie saw that. <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, so what have you been doing? Like you just get back to Tassie, like you're sort of you're not racing this year? What's the what's the what's the G O? Yeah, so I was racing. I was racing the World Enduro Championship. I was living in Italy again, sixth year in the in the series and had a had three sort of big crashes in a row everyone hit my head and sort of just the first two were all right you know you take it pretty lightly you hit your head and you know you sort of talk about how bad it is to hit your head and everything and then i hit my head a third time and didn't even knock myself out i just hit it and and uh lost vision i was blurry i spewed up like for a whole week which is like shouldn't happen yeah and yeah, I was just so over the whole thing and over it as in just wasn't coming together, had anxiety through the roof because it wasn't coming together and you know, you don't sleep, you don't perform, you don't, nothing goes right. So I just made the call, I said, right, I'm out and I'm going home and I'm going to try and just get shit back together. Yeah, try and get my life back together, you know, be happy and all the rest of it. So made the call, came back and I've just been off the bike for like three months now and and you know i can finally get up without a head spin and i can start to see things better so Mm. you know what a better way to sort of shoot this weekend off with a with an event really bloody beautiful and so like what did you pull this closer to you gotta gotta get that right just pull it just pull it right in there i know you don't like stuff in your face you're sketched out but it's not gonna bite you (laughs) (laughs) um but like yeah so did you had you seen much of like day in the dirt from like the u.s or did you kind of have any idea of what you were coming into well yeah always um follow toby pretty closely and i know he's been doing really well uh, over there he's won a heap of trophies a heap of nice trophies yeah, a vespa a gun and all this cool stuff so i was kind of hoping to turn up and you know wanted, i up. wanted to be part of that of yeah. course so um four months or three months off the bike wasn't going to get me anything so yeah. you know racing guys like toby gibbs Dredd and duro and all these american heroes so um, I was just hoping to have a good weekend, catch up with Sam and, and, you know, the whole crew. That was my aim for the weekend, but, it, you know, it was really good. And I really liked the fact that there were so many dudes there doing random things, you know, random bikes, random outfits. Oh, yeah. And, you know, every, everybody had their own their own uh, criteria and was happy. So I think it was just an unreal event as far as diversity and, and uh, good times. Yeah, it was... I mean, I'd been to him in the States and I think, man, Australians are just different to where like, it's always going to be like a, just a different vibe anyway. But like to, to me, it was pretty much like, have you seen fucking Woodstock from back in the day? Like this. I was thinking summer nuts. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a fucking really good it analogy. Like, it was like summer nuts with dirt bikes. It was crazy, man. And like people were fucking into it. Like and it, it we was we saw some shit we saw some shit man. <laughs> things got weird it definitely things got very weird but in such a good way like there was we gotta gotta th- like you can't deny that there was like a couple fuckheads that were carrying on and there's a few dudes trying to fight but like i even said to simon when i was driving out yesterday like to them it's unacceptable as like an event management company to have like people fighting and shit and like it is we're all sort of all there for the 
not that reason. But at the end of the day, like it was really only like a couple dickheads that were doing it. And for how much fucking drinking was going on and, how and for how much, and you know, like there was thousands of people the percentage, there. Man. The percentage of people that were being fuckheads is very low for the amount of people that were there. Oh, a hundred percent. And like we, dude, we had so much fun. Like, I mean, I had mean, too how, much fun. How did you have fun? I didn't even see you. You're asleep. <laughs> I had too much fun on one of the nights. <laughs> the vampire. But dude, I didn't think like... Oh, look, where's Jace? I haven't seen him for two days. Oh, just, no, he's still here. Oh, no, hang on. It's night time. He's back. I'm back. Well, yeah, look, we all know what happens when I drink. It's not good. But I didn't think You've I was... you got to be kidney. you got to be kidney. I didn't think I was set. Like, did I even look drunk at like late on Friday night? Is that when you were talking to me and trying to show me how you were going to choke me? Or <laughs> no, I wasn't going to choke different, you. Different moment. <laughs> I was saying that someone, the one-legged dude with an axe, was probably the guy that had to get choked. That wasn't. I didn't ever want to choke uh, you. I'm going to have a shout out to Monster here, but I reckon it was definitely the guy with a mullet that threw off his monster jacket yeah. and wanted to bash like anybody. Yeah, there was, was a probably couple. A clear but winner. then again, it was like three just dickheads, and there, there was a guy in a halo that punch another dude yeah got weird it was that wasn't cool nah the was, whole setup was wrong and yeah i felt a bit like <laughs> it got I, felt, I felt a bit wronged by the whole situation <laughs> i'm like this isn't where we're at yeah but anyway it happened. but again that like we said so it's, a, it's like the whole thing one no campsite so yeah so sick so but dude the drags the were drags. like maybe my favorite part of the event so like uh, who did the drags was it Dust young, Hustle no, it was, young Henry's. was it Young Henry's yeah either way so there yeah, was it was. A, it was Young Henry's that put on the drags that should have been on every single night that was like one of the more fun things that I've ever been a part of like there was just random people on like like Kempy even from Young Henry's he had like his cow bike like the bike that had like all the cow print all over it and like everyone did uh, the AF guy on yeah. his on his 65 with like the hangover deal Sam got in there I poured I poured half a Young Henry's on Sam's face through my helmet yeah through his helmet and then I didn't even realise that I forgot that that had happened until I went to race the next day and put my helmet on and it smelled like a brewery <laughs> 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 oh but like oh just the whole thing man like that that whole vibe was just so much fun so sick i'm ready for next year already i know same. but yeah so saturday I need, like, a, I need a week to recover yeah i need so, to get some work done for like a little bit oh, and, then, and then we can go again i think like because there's obviously no reception like even with boost you don't have reception out there which even is saying something even with boost um but it was like almost good too to like not have Dude, it was reception. so gnarly for me like Matty, how's my phone been in the last 24 hours it's disgusting <laughs> <laughs> matty has got like an iphone one so nothing works on oh. his he hasn't even worked let me show you guys and he's like man this is why you gotta have a phone like this so yes, you don't have look to put at that. up with it <laughs> oh, that's but so as good. soon as we drove out of there i was like probably ding like ding 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 five messages deep or something this is heavy because mm. everyone i knew that was there was like hey where are you yeah yeah but my, I've been out since Friday. I'm sorry, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. At about five o'clock. Yeah, it's a long time to go without. So oh, it was so good. I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait <laughs> to get bush, back. <laughs> Bushman over here. <laughs> uh, what was the? Uh, what was your favourite part of the event? Winning the two man teams. Oh, that was that oh, was yeah, good. You got to race the Tobes. Yeah, which well, was great because what actually happened was we were meant to have two teams: <laughs> Maddie McAlpine and Toby, and me and Matt were going to do it. And then Matty decided he was a soft cock and didn't want to race in the mud. So then he bailed. And then I was like, well, I'll bail and we'll make a super team. <laughs> <laughs> With our powers combined. Yeah. yeah. So me and Toby took took uh, on heaps of legends. What, what was it? Was, was it, it Reardon and Enduro? The, the, the old switcheroo. The old switcheroo. And the mates race. Yeah. Yeah. The mates right. race. So then you guys... So we, so we could do it because we had mates and we were mates and, and they didn't, so... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, was, what was it like bloody um, yeah it's alright it's just this laptop um, what was it like racing with Tobes because you said you looked up to him for a while eh of course yeah and, and anybody that that's in the racing industry would or should look up to him because he's the man 
and he's a, he's a good mate to everybody. So, Absolutely. Um, so that not was the best cool. Haircut out there as well. No, not the best. Not no. <laughs> no. no. There wasn't many good haircuts on the weekend. To be, to oh, be fair, uh, hey, did you see the one photo he put up with um, that dude that had like the full legit mullet? Yeah, I was there when I got taken. Oh, that I was thing like was Toby, disgusting. Toby, Toby. I think your brother's here to see. You. <laughs> <laughs> Can we pull that? I want to pull that. No, I can't show it anyway. I was going to say, but Toby just put on like the greatest photo on his Instagram. I give him so much shit all the time but it is pretty cool like how many people come up to the camp on that over the four days and like the amount of time that he puts into the people that do come up to him like it's it is a fucking credit to the dude oh absolutely yeah it's humbling because you know he he is the legend and he's got such a following here and and i think just pull it it. if you want to sit back just pull it (laughs) so get back to where i you can sit wherever you want, yeah, man. The, the, it moves. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's just there. He's doing his, his thing. And I think in an event like that's super good for him because there is no pressure to make the race. It's, you know, the, the races are, you know, it doesn't matter if you rock up last minute to the race. So that made it that made it good. You can spend a bit more time talking to mm. the fans. And and if not, you can just catch them after the race because, it, you know, it was cruisy. Yeah, and it's like you're just there. Like there's no... There's no, like, barriers for fans. There's no kind of um, behind a, a semi and you've got the railings to kind of separate you and the fans. Like, they're literally just parked right next to us. Yeah, I mean, where else in the world can you go and sit around a campfire and have a beer with Toby Price or even, for that matter, like, Jay Marmont, Kirk Gibbs yeah, yeah, and Simmons. Yeah, yeah, sat around and had a few with him and Leeski and, and all these guys that, you know, you, you don't run into in your day-to-day yeah. situation. And it was just really relaxed. And, you know, all weekend I kept saying to Sam, I can't wait for next year because yeah. it's just, you, you know, know the, the first better. time's just a feeler. Yeah. And then next year I already know, like, I'm already planning, I need to get this, I need to get something weird, I need to get a motorbike, something different. To, yeah. You know, because you want to go there and you want to get a trophy and or if not, you just want to do something weird, so... Man, and it, and it, like, it's such a crazy event to where, like, the dude... Like, look at Yanni, right? Like, Yanni goes out there on that 99 YZ250 and he's got the flano and jeans on. And when he was going down that start straight yesterday morning in that uh, that team race, and it's just, like, wheel so spinning good. and he's just going through the gears. Just flapping. And, yeah, the flano is flapping, like... In the crowd's eyes, that dude's as big of a hero as Toby riding his rally bike around the TT track or the dude that just like rocked up and did that huge burnout on Friday afternoon at the end of the TT race on his Harley. And it's like, you kind of can be a hero at that event in like everyone's eyes. You know what I mean? Like we're kind of throwing out those like MVP awards. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you just get those random fucking guys that just come out of the woodwork and just shine. Yeah. Because they're doing like crazy shit. They're just not scared to just fucking carry on. Yeah, it was... Yeah. I... Yeah. I don't know. I'm dead. I've lost the words. (laughs) It was that good. I'm I'm just picturing... Picture in the the dust hustle track, which was in fact the the mud hustle track. Yeah, and uh, there was a few legends that turned up there um, on an old bull taco, and and they put on a real show. There was Johnny two. McLean. Yeah, Johnny was out there on his that old YZ. So and yeah. there were, I seen a pass there that was all or nothing. The guy backed it in from the top of the hill to the left hander, <laughs> and uh, he almost rubbed his shoulder on the way through. And the other guy had just had to shut off a little bit, and that's like probably the best pass of his whole life. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah it's like yeah like the whole the whole thing man like you, it's just geared around fun and like especially for you like because you're coming off like a few shit years in italy and you're kind of over the whole like i guess the situation of being there and racing and stuff like even for a guy like you that gets paid to ride like are you longing for an event like that where it's like you it just doesn't really matter what you do or your results it's just kind of all about being there yeah, I think the whole event's pretty leveling as in, you know, it doesn't matter what you're riding, what you're brung, who you are, you're just there and, uh, you know, everyone everyone is there just to get a taste of who you are and what you're all about. Yeah. So it's just nice. You just get to relax and be yourself. And and I think that's what racing in Australia is really missing from an outside perspective. Mm. Um, I, th- Yeah, I, I want to come back and do some racing and this whole weekend just give me a whole new vision of what i want to do 
Yeah. Because I was sort of stuck a little bit, to, you know, like deflated on it all. So my man Sam here and I have just been brainstorming ideas and over the weekend it was just Jeez, like... we've got some... <laughs> yeah. We've got weird. some <laughs> yeah, shit in the world. We've got some weird ideas. <laughs> between, between bad stories and bad ideas, we've come up with something. <laughs> so, but no. I mean, I guess it's like, isn't it a sign of the times when you can see like thousands of people come to Day in the Dirt and like four people come to the MX Nationals? Yeah, isn't that isn't that telling? Like, do we need to look into this any well, further? It's just about bringing the fun into things, I think. You yeah, know? and you can touch it; it's there. You can you, you can, can smell ride around the-, the track with these dudes. Yeah, and and have the best time ever. It's so sick. And there's yeah, no, I know, I know but like I was out there, and Toby, I'd like to say he was passing me, but he was definitely lapping me. <laughs> and um, you know, he's come through, and the the mullet's flapping, and he's like, "Yeah, boy." on the way past like it's so sick like to be able to ride with those with those dudes and that's like us that knows these people so can you imagine the completely random punter like even I saw um, the Dreamers dudes put together an Instagram video for Toby and uh, they had him like stopping and picking someone's bike up yeah and it's like can you imagine how dope that that would have been for whoever it was like I'm not sure who it was that he picked the the bike up but like toby stops drops his rally bike on the ground and then picks up your bike and you're like yeah you're right mate you and then rides off like that's fucking priceless man that's and sick. like Absolutely. that's the kind of thing that's going to keep bringing that person back to events like that's going to keep the froth going whereas like the there's other events where it feels like really segregated it's like yeah, them yeah. It's and then and them. yeah and it's well, like it's you're truck, not on it's, that level it's a truck thing with the you know there's a barrier and yeah you know, you well even it. ktm didn't put up any barriers at all this That's weekend so like cool. they just had the awning and that was it and yeah. like every there was like swags on the ground and shit like it's so sick and i mean i do get it though like why that isn't a thing at like nationals and shit like that yeah but at the same time it's like how do you then kind of have like a middle ground or like you know you should have seen our pits it was organized (laughs) (laughs) people are like oh where are you guys pitting me like oh we've got a a high ace out the back we're sleeping on a mattress you know you know where toby is we're just off the side of that (laughs) (laughs) where's your tent oh we don't have one we're actually sort of under uh under Maddie and April's tent but not really we just put our gear bags under it when it rained dude the, the best thing after the our bikes are leaning up against the high ice it's so good it was amazing the best thing was yesterday Maddie pointed it out so like me and Sam did the little sponsor race which you could barely call a race and uh, I don't care I got second yeah you got second and um and then it's a race very serious <laughs> they're like how many laps do you just want to do he beat you <laughs> He did beat me. Sorry. <laughs> I got third. We've talked about it over dinner and breakfast and lunch today. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I know that he beat you. Oh, I was like, there was whatever a- captain world champion. <laughs> <laughs> there was one wins a win. There was one yeah. turn. There was one turn I went into and I was like, I'll go on the inside here. And then it was just like, Ooh, and I was like, oh, that was a bad idea. And then <laughs> Sam and the other dude were just like, <laughs> fill me in. I had no tear offs. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> I was like, well, that's me. And I'm finished. And I'm out. Uh, but yeah, it was like Sam finishes the race and then we're all just sitting there talking shit. I had some post-race uh, electrolyte. Amin- amino acid. Amino acid, uh, Great Northern beers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and there's just like this trail of gear. So like there was like a boot, another boot, an armor, a helmet, goggles. And then it finally gets like Sam sitting down having a beer. <laughs> and it was like a Hansel and Gretel of fucking Sam's shit. Yeah. So that was your pits. That was my pits. And then there was like... Really- that was actually Sawley's pits. It went from our pits to Sawley's pits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but like, yeah, just, I don't know, that that whole... It's like there has to be a way to like bring some of that fun to like the... These other events that are like struggling. Because like, dude, there's... An, that whole Young Henry's drag strip took up what? A hundred meters of the yeah. event. Yeah. like fuck man how much fun would it be like say if it was at, like nationals or super x like if you rode to the event you can enter the drags for free yeah yeah like, but even even how fun would it be to watch those guys do it as yeah, a spectator as well, yeah you know you watch your dylan longs and all these mad dogs that you you follow on instagram and you know you can get there within two or three meters of them and yeah man go for it do something do a wheelie you know i mean it's hard to sort of get the spectators involved because ma is so strict yeah and you know there's a new rule every event and 
and uh, not, not not to hang any shit on them, but you know that's that's the general consensus. That's the reality of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the, like I those mean, guys the, are the, tough to deal with. The federations of motorcycling in general are hard. Like, how hard was it for you to get a license to ride on the weekend? Yeah, you know, but let's you know, the, the, let's be frank. That was that was <laughs> that was one of my deals where I wasn't all. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I was so. I rang like, him up and I'm like, "Have you got all your shit together?" He's like, "Well." My license is suspended at the moment because I've got an Italian license. And I was like, well, you know, like, it's like this weekend. He goes, oh, like, as in I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, better give him a ring then. <laughs> so how lucky was I ran into AJ who had Matt Falvo's number. And he he's just like, yeah, I got it sorted. So you should, you big shout out to like Matt. A, you're a legend. You would have been able to get a day license or something. Right? I still got it. I still paid for it. Mm. You know, just doing my bit. Just doing my part to support yeah. the Aussie Moto community. Yeah. But no, like. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, if there was ways to have those events or, like, you know, things at events where it's, like, getting those guys more involved because, like, everyone still had fun, you know? So easy. Everyone did such a good job, like, the organisers and... Yeah. I mean, it was... Everyone that was there is what make... Like, that's what makes the event, right? Mm. Is is the people at it. Yeah, no, definitely. Every, Every time. I think too like they're gonna like you said that was the first year that they did it um and i think it's gonna get better i think there's like i spoke to simon too and and uh, simon barrett from transmoto or that three crowns group but he um he was like really open to feedback as well i think that's like another thing man like if you want to look at um maybe some of the things that are holding back like the MX Nationals and I mean I fucking hate to like act like I'm shitting on them but it's like it is what it is at the end of the day like I guess I've made my feelings pretty well known on it all but it's like here's a guy that's like Simon with the that event like yeah please give me feedback yeah, yeah. please what do you, what do you think what do you, you know think? what I mean yeah. and there's no like defensive nature about it and not like even I was like man I th- it's just like little things that I think to where it's like the bar was really far away from like the dance floor and it's yeah. like let's just bring that and then he's like oh we we wanted it there in the floor plan but then there was a gradient of the hill so we couldn't quite do it and it's just like little things but i say that to him and i'm like yeah that should have been a bit closer and like i don't know that there was a hill there and like no. it was just my feedback well, you didn't know the gradient of the hill did you no i didn't take it into account but then when i say it there's no like defensive nature no, no, no. that comes from those guys mm. and it's the same with like wigan when you tell wigan something it's the same with like that whole crew and it's been like that with six hour as well like you need to do a six hour event or an eight hour event with us dude you'd fucking froth on it yeah can you be on my team i need all the help I can yeah get. let's say let's have a three man <laughs> No, I'm thinking about just joining like a two man team. Just you just and away Tobes. from I race you guys, you guys whatever. So you, and to- you and Tobes versus you guys, me and James. You guys help me out, but <laughs> we'll fuck you up. No, I met some nice dudes on the weekend, so I might ring them up. <laughs> there was uh yeah, there was all types there this weekend. I feel like whatever version of motorcycling we want to do, we now have We're friends. Coming. Yeah, we now have friends. Oh, we could boycott Maddie and Toby. <laughs> you could what? There's, we need to boycott Maddie and Toby. What we can we, we should beat them. Yeah, I reckon. Mm. Eh? Dude, how's like? Is that the fastest manager rider combo of all time? <laughs> well, we're How actually we... we're actually talking about that because we're watching the start of the Coupe de Gras and I, and I said I said Daniel, who's out front? Oh, yeah, Tobes is in second. Maddie, and then he's like, imagine Tobes wins and Maddie gets second. That's got pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't be there. I he's, know, un- <laughs> he's unreal. And then I was, I was sitting next to your mum and dad and. I'm like, this guy's unreal. Oh, by, the, oh, by the way, Lizzie and Maddie are friends on Facebook now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Facebook pretty official. pumped about it. To be fair. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, she's a legend, though. Yeah, Someone, yeah she's oh. a she's a real straight shooter too. Oh, so, yeah. so she's dad, I love it. But, uh, yeah, dad's had a fucking dummy spit too over the weekend. That was <laughs> so fair, good. Yeah, <laughs> Did you use the water? <laughs> <laughs> was that you? <laughs> it wasn't me, mate. I was in bed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, vampire doesn't come out to wash bikes. I don't. Know. Well, dude. So how's this? I think it's worth mentioning or giving a shout out to Sawley. I was so like not into the riding side of the weekend that I didn't even put my own bike on the track, and I rode Sawley's because I didn't want to get another bike dirty. So it was not me that I, used the water. I heard that, and I also witnessed it. Yeah, so I was like, fuck this, I'm not getting my shit dirty, that's muddy as fuck. But by the time we got out there, it really wasn't muddy. No. No. Um, Peter wouldn't wash it? Nah, Dad was whinging about another bike being washed, and I was just like, all right, whatever, I'll just ride Sawley's. And it had a hydraulic clutch too, so I was like, yeah, I'm all about that life, because I feel like 
it's going to be pretty rough. And it actually was insanely rough, dude. Especially on the second lap when I didn't stand up at all. <laughs> yeah, I was like full. Compared to what the first lap where you also didn't stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was Again, g- whatever, Mr. World Champion. <laughs> yeah, it's easy for you to say, yeah. bro. You've got a fucking thing called talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me and Jason are going to do this shit with no help. <laughs> I actually, I was, we were there watching and was there with Pete and Liz and we are watching, oh, here you go, Sam, Jason, yeah, yeah. And then you went over, like, you did the first few corners and you did the two skis and that second ski drops off into that sort of, like, right-handed berm. Oh, God. And everybody all day was up the berm and it went, so like, a little bit Where else are we talking about? Just off the start. So you do like right, left. Oh left. yeah, the ski jumps. Yeah, Sam yeah. went to the inside. Sam went eh? to the inside, yeah. and uh, I did notice he that. went off the ski, like only just got up the ski because it was that muddy, <laughs> and then landed in a dusty hole, and then sort of like weight went forward, didn't get any drive, and I was like, oh, here, <laughs> here comes Jason, he's gonna get you. And, yeah, I, I almost. Yeah. You uh, use so much why, energy in why, five why, meters; <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't let Jace beat me. I almost, I almost it was a pretty passed desperate Sam. Pass. Yeah, I almost passed Sam there, and I was like, I just was like, oh, I said I'd do a sight lap. I'm gonna get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you stick to your fucking oh, guns, no. man. You're an idiot. Yeah, but um, yeah, old, old Matty coming in the way that he does, like, I just don't think people get how little he does right. Like, it's fucking absurd, and he goes so fast on a bike. And it's like, that's a completely stock 350 with like, I don't know if that thing has suspension. Like it's a trail bike. It looks speaking so soft. Of, speaking of the dog, he's just, he's just texted me about tickets to some band. Oh, really? <laughs> Fucking just re- ready to get back on the send wagon. Fantastic. Uh, but yeah, it is, it is pretty crazy. And like, cause I was up doing a little bit of the commentating on the mic and stuff. And like the boys out there are just like, dude, how much does he ride? Like he should race. And I'm like, nah, he don't ride. He rode the six hour, rode the eight hour, and a couple times at QMP with Sam over the last couple of weeks, and that is it. Mm-hmm. So I was speaking to Liz, and she was sort of telling me all about it. She's a little proud mum moment, of course. Number and one son. <laughs> yeah, and she was just. That's t- Toby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. She was telling me that you know he's just so blasé with with everything that he does. You know, he's got more talent in his little finger than most of us have got in our whole body. But so his big brother. <laughs> and uh, he said that you know, like uh, Jason, for example, just trains his butt off and and goes you know fixes on something and he does it full ball whereas he's just like yeah whatever it's cool just be good at sort of everything and yeah it's (laughs) cruisy it's fucking frustrating like you should see him on a mountain bike too like we'll go and like he'll be riding like courtney atkinson it's like a a triathlon fucking red bull world champion and he just like goes out and just just does just follow as a no doubt yeah he's got this vision that he would be just following that girl that, that's a rear, rear. Oh, no, no, he wouldn't be then. <laughs> no, 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 that's why he's no, trying to keep yeah, up. That's, yeah, that's, no, that wasn't. That <laughs> wouldn't, good, wouldn't. St- good story, <laughs> Matty. <laughs> I've been full of good stories all weekend. Man, we've had we've told some real shit stories over the weekend. What's been us. the best one? Oh, I reckon the best one was actually Matt's dad, Yogi. We got him on the phone on the way up. <laughs> <laughs> and he was telling us all about this TV show we've been watching. And then right at the very end, me and Matty just, I mean, me and, um, yeah, me and Maddie. There's too many Maddies around. There's a lot this of Maddies. Weekend, there was, honestly, there was like 60 Maddies. Six in the campsite. <laughs> there was six in our campsite. <laughs> Who Maddie? else was Maddies? Maddie McFerrin, Maddie McAlpine, Maddie Phillips. Maddie the photographer oh, with yeah. Wade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Holmes. Matt Holmes. And there was some other Matt somewhere. Too. Matt from Matt, uh, the Henry's, the drink. Yes, yes. Yep. Shout out to him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we couldn't have yeah, done it without him, really. No. <laughs> what a guy. But anyway, we got to the end of this story. Or a- end Yogi, of the Yogi summer mats. Us, yeah, summer mats. We got to the end of this story that he was telling us about this show that he'd been watching, and we just went real quiet because we thought there was something else coming. Nothing else coming. He pipes up. And then he pipes up and he goes, Well, I guess you'd just have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So that was pretty no, cool. anyway, that yeah, just topped off that I'd just finished telling Sam that he had to be there to witness this other story. <laughs> <laughs> so just like I was just like, oh yeah, sick. And so then you guys Yogi followed through with another you should have been there and it's just <laughs> unreal. <laughs> That's like, yeah, if you have to add you should have seen there or you had to be there, it's like mm, Dude, Well, I, I, you I, actually just suck at telling stories. Yeah, that's Dude, me, I, I, was, I tried to tell a story last night and I just forgot halfway through what I was talking about, so I just said to Manny, I was like, just don't worry about it, man. <laughs> man, I, I I was uh I would have not been surprised if this didn't happen today. 
Yeah, I was so worried about coming here because I'm such a bad analyst of any story and I've got nothing to say. So, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, what are the, what are the people going to think? Matt's got the story to tell. Oh, yeah, that was cool. And yeah, I was there. And yeah, nice. Yeah, that yeah, guy is such a good guy. And well, then, I, to, then I really, I'd, I'd be to telling thank my parents for bringing me. Yeah, mum and, and, and dad. My sponsors. Um, well, at least yeah. the, <laughs> at least you've only got two sponsors. So, like, you don't have Three. that many people. Well, who's the third? Well, you got, you got a helmet from Bell. Oh, thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Yeah. Dude, how good's Gary? Oh, he gave us this. I'm gonna give this. Wow, a little. He gave us this. We're giving this away on the Instagram. Speaking of Gary from Bell, so um, it's a bullet, and it's actually rad as fuck. And I want one myself. But um, I don't know. We're gonna do some kind of giveaway on the Instagram like today because people actually win shit on Gypsy Tales. We gave away that oh, surfboard. Good Lord, you know when you enter a comp and you're like. Yeah, no I one. did also Let's enter that comp. Did you enter Didn't the surfboard win. comp? Yep. Someone did. His name is Brad and his board is dope as fuck. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's, let, we'll do another competition right now. What? I will put up a pair of signed Matt Phillips gloves. Ooh. And you can give them away however you like. All right, so we're going to give away a bell <laughs> helmet. So we're going to give away this bell helmet and then we're going to give a, a, away a pair of signed Matty Phillips. We're going to not give them away together. We're going to have two winners. Yeah. In fact, what I'll do is I'll give you two pairs of Matt Phillips gloves. One pair that's signed so you can keep them. Mm. One pair to wear. I actually wore my Matty Phillips gloves on the weekend. You did, you were representing. There was a few sets. I was pretty pumped because Sam said, look, we don't sell any. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> you like no one, one the- cares, bro. And then, I, yeah, they get tagged on Instagram over the weekend which I didn't see until yeah. last night. So Matt's phone doesn't have Instagram on. Yeah. So. It's cool. Dude, I, I wore... I think I tagged you in them like not long ago at the... I think it was eight hours. And, I was you, like, were bummed, and you were bummed because he never liked it or looked at it. Or <laughs> no, he, he wrote me back. Did you? I'm pretty sure you did. Yeah, Jeez. I write back to everyone, Sam. <laughs> Jeez, you're good on social. Yeah, he is a good, yeah, he's a good guy. But uh, I was like doing eight hours. I was like, you know, I had a bunch of fist gloves in my bag and I was like, Enduro God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Summon the Enduro God. Yeah, I need this. I need anything you've got Dude, for me. It's so gnarly. Like, I was talking to someone on the weekend about like the Enduro World titles and how crazy that shit is. Like, can you please explain to us what it's like to race through actual snow? Oh, it's just disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> now I can open how is it. How is it in well, Finland? Tell the, us about it. I love Finland. I love the country. I love the people. They're ice ice cold until you get to know them and then they're just the best Funny warm, fuck. warmest people they're just great and um, you sounds know they're so like, serious sounds like a few other people I know <laughs> like, like you Matty shit, hey, shit, um, shit story had to be there <laughs> yeah so there's gonna be like here we go guys this is gonna be a shitty story that should have been there <laughs> the first year we raced there was like awesome we got there it was like raining on the snow it was like really hard to ride sort of muddy and you know, minus sort of minus degrees, not 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 too bad. You know, it was pretty humid. Kind of been real warm because it was snowing. No, it was pretty humid, so like <laughs> it's, it's not it's not like cold until you get wet. Whereas, okay, so then we raced there, and it was icy for the race. So ice is a really good thing if you're going to be racing on it because it's frozen. You got spike tires, and you ride normally. What? You stand Spiked up a little bit. It's tires. like just like normal. And, and what's it through? Like, what are we talking? Through the mountains and shit. So, well, there's no mountains in Finland. It's dead just flat. flat. Yeah, it's as flat as their personality. If you don't know them, so, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> this, anyway. flashes a dog with a tin dick. Fla- flashes a dog. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, we just race. It's like a. It's almost like a rally. You start and then you ride for twelve hours and do special tests along the way. Oh right. So then. it's a tough event. It's like 14 hours on the bike the first day and then eight the second. So the first year was really good, done really well because it was like icy, you just go fast in the trees, just ride normally. And, you know, I stand on my rear brake all the time so I didn't burn my rear brake and <laughs> and the team was happy. <laughs> Mechanic didn't have anything to do, so that was cool. <laughs> and then this year we went back and raced and we thought we had it pretty well sussed out from the first year. It was just going to turn up and do our thing. But it just snowed and snowed and snowed, snowed. So, as you can imagine, there's a you know it snows not compacted. It's not anything. So there was like a a wheel rut in the middle, which was like a slot car track. So not like lent in oh, as you yeah. would normally yeah. ride, and it was two slots for your feet. So, and then it was bumpy as hell because the amateur riders that open the track just cruise about. Yeah, yeah, and um, 
they don't lean in. Cruise about. Yeah. Oh, is that Compared to him. They, they cruise about so much that there was a 50-year-old guy that was showing me a track and he finished. It was about a 10-minute loop and he was already sitting back in the van having a hot chocolate before I got back. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we weren't doing really good in the practice and then we went and done the race and it snowed again. Um, so, basically, when you ride in the snow you've got to follow this slot car rut and you've got to be you know you've got to slow down when you see a corner coming down coming up you just slow down you go around it and then you take off again it's always like the gayest riding you could ever do because <laughs> you don't actually get to do anything you don't send it at all no and, and when you get in race mode you go fast you punch your foot through that thin layer of rut not the tire because that's so iced up at the bottom you put your foot through and it's like dropping a boat anchor in doing about 100 and your boat just pulls to the left so then you fall in the fluff um, if you get stuck in it, it's really bad because you got to try and get over to the rut and then your rear wheel is kind of like a d- grinding disc. Yeah. Digs in and the rest of your bike doesn't go forward. You get stuck, you get carried in. So you lose a couple of minutes, which is like, what, a couple of minutes, you're out of the race anyway. Yeah, so yeah. You do that five times in a test and you finish 10 minutes behind everyone. And um, So yeah, that, the first year was really fun. It was just super cool. Because and, it was all like a novelty, right? Like because you'd never seen anything like this shit That's before. right. And it was just something random. And it was like the promoter said, we're going to do this cool event. It's going to be in the snow. And, you know, please just, you know, re- you know, respect what we're doing. It's going to be unreal. And we're all like, yeah, yeah, we can do it. You know, it's not, it was kind of interesting. We did well. So we loved it. The second year didn't go to plan. Wanted to go to take myself to the hospital after the first day. It was just so cold and over it and it's like yeah i mean that's gotta I, be dog shit. i was just riding like, even sometimes like snowboarding which is meant to do in the snow can be a punish let alone doing something that you're not really meant to do in the snow so yeah. crazy yeah like if you imagine like you, a mud you go, race you just go from one extreme to the other though in the world titles right so you go yeah. from that then you go to somewhere that's hot as fuck and dusty and crazy and then the next week it's like on, Back to on that, rocks yeah. on rocks or mountains and rocks and you're pushing your bike up slippery stuff and yeah the first two like when i first went there it was so good as in you know i was so lucky i went there when i was young i didn't have any routine i didn't know any differently yeah so everything is so cool you know it could be like the car's broken down and we're stuck but it's like oh this is cool because because i'm on the side of the road and there's some crazy mountain and yeah i'm here yeah you know how good's that i'm here i've made it i'm doing it and nothing's a trouble and then as you get older you learn everything and everything was better before and then you know it becomes yeah. a bit of a drag and um it's sort of sort of hard to put that but uh, well i think like it's just literally a saying like for every hot chick there's a dude tired of fucking her like and i think <laughs> it's the same with but i think it's that but it's really it's such like a relevant saying and like because it becomes your normal like whenever something's not normal like whenever you first start banging a chick that's like super hot you're just like you're excited because it's yeah this new thing but then you're like ah she stinks when she farts just like me and she doesn't look that good when she wakes up and it's like the novelty of that new shiny toy wears off and i just man it's the same for all athletes and i think it's like i think it's such an unfortunate reality and then there's people i mean there's especially people that'd be listening to the podcast and be like oh my god i'd give anything to be in the world championship and doing and it's like yeah you would but then once you get there the same thing will happen to you no one is immune to the shiny glitter rubbing off this new thing and then underneath all of that is all the reality that sets in with it yeah i mean that's the thing like when you first went to europe right you're bright eyed bushy tail. I, I, I was a virgin of european racing well you've gone over there and you're and you're and you're racing for the factory husky team from tasmania like people don't even get out of tasmania to come and race on the mainland hardly yeah let alone go to well europe. what was like i don't i don't really get when you like the point that you actually went Explain to, to jason how you've done this yeah because <laughs> i remember i what was the last year you raced motocross in australia 2010 okay i was gonna say how old were you? 16 16, 17. Because I filmed you in some point at like either junior Aussies or under 19s. Did you do under 19s for Yamaha yeah. in 2010? No, I did it for myself. Okay, On cool. a Honda. Oh, right. Well, at some you point. You were the junior nationals when he was just sending it. And he was winning races by like 45 seconds. Which track was but, that at? But then. That was Bonnaroo. But then, but then car, cartwheeling the next motor. <laughs> oh, that was it. That was it. Oh. 
<laughs> Ouch. Let's talk the listeners through that particular race. <laughs> so, so, race any, so we're in Wanneroo, junior motocross titles. That was 08, right? 08. Yeah. And uh, this is good. Spent like heaps of money and heaps of time getting over there. Mum and dad were just putting it in. I was putting His it in. bike was a fucking rocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Had my mate Simon from Tassie at Flow Force <laughs> trick it right up. So we're there. Everything's going well. Winning the race is like all the heats by heaps. Winning the finals by like a minute. So we're talking like I was in good form for my domination. Yeah, it was just it was just you know when things click that's where how it goes. Got to the last race, I thought I won't just push into the first turn like I'd been doing like an animal. I just held back. Sure enough, a guy got in front of me. For some reason, hit the brakes. I hit his back wheel, went down, normal stuff. Didn't get hurt. Went to the second corner, like a bull. Did not shut it off. Real No, no, I was in, I was in the power. It was just, oh. and uh, anyway, rear wheel went out of the berm, hit oh. some like dusty service road on the outside, went out the front hard. All right, no big deal. Picked the bike up, restart again. <laughs> Dude, there's photos somewhere of it, like a full on like photo of Maddie's like legs. Hey, keep over, telling over the story. I'm gonna look up for the photo. Yeah, yeah, it was insane. So a big tumble shake the goggles you know flick the peak back up where it was inside my jaw and then uh yeah coming back through the pack and uh landed on a dude there was they were they called three pinnacles there at the junior track which is pretty cool it's like the only sort of up and down sort of in the track jumped over one there was a dude already crashed on the other side so i landed on him over the handlebars again no big deal i still got it. i'll get back to where i need to be and uh, unfortunately another guy had fallen off and cut his finger off or something his name was Sean shout out to Sean from WA <laughs> so he axed himself as well yeah he did he hurt his it was blood and it was pretty nasty so that was unfortunate so anyway I was coming back through did two or three laps and I was in like I don't know sixth or something yeah, yeah it was like this Passing and like 20 people lap or something. Yeah, but that's just what you do when you're, you know, you're in good form. Well, when you're a savage. When you're, yeah, it was just... You're not me or James. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, so I was, I was right back in the mix. It was all going to happen. It was no big deal, you know. You know, when, you, you know, back up. when no. you're on, you're on. Listen, yeah. we don't. We don't. Heart, we, we don't, yeah. but yeah, but I yeah, can well, imagine. I, I've seen you do it. Yeah, so, heart, yeah. heart rate's in the right spot. Eyes are forward. You're just going for it and everything's sick. You know, it's just wicked. <laughs> anyway, so they, they DNF the race red flag. And I'm oh. like, you beauty, I'm straight back to the start line where the like under 16s yeah. were waiting. I'm like, all right, everybody out. We're restarting. Might need some fuel, but I'm back on here. I mean, I'm back in. And then they said, no, uh, we're going to call the race the race. So oh. I come through in like sixth. Awesome. I've probably won still. Uh, and then they go, oh, no, we're going to call it the lap before. So it's only like two lap race. Oh. It was like the worst setup ever. So I end up losing the title um, to a legend by the name of Sam Duncanson. Oh, still, oh still, Samuel. Yeah, yeah. Right. I remember such a good dude. It, actually, yeah, yeah, and um, glad it went to someone good. Yeah, yeah, and he was such a legend about it. He's like, oh, sorry, man, like you deserved it. And he's like, he's a good dude. Um, so that was that race, and the whole thing was revolving around this stupid official in WA. <laughs> and mate, he's chewed me like twice. I know him. He's. Oh. <laughs> about the most uncool bloke for the sport ever <laughs> anyway he got the gig at doing there was the first super x that chad oh, reed was doing yeah, yeah. and he had to get out of there early to go there and blow his chest at that event yeah you know and so he wanted to just tie it all up and then it's there so he crushed me dreams there so he stitched <laughs> so he, he robbed me of an australian championship which would have made me at least a little bit cool at home since i've you know anything, oh, well, you got anything else i've ever yeah. done was outside of here so um You've got a couple more world titles, so yeah. Like, but it would trumpet. just be nice, you know. Ty Simmons is, and that uh, you know, I was I was riding with Ando, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm like a 300 time Australian champion." I'm like, "Yeah, well, I was almost." I almost won. Yeah, I was yeah. All, almost had something relatable, but. Uh, <laughs> but when did you go to like? When did the enduro thing even come on your radar? Um, so I was in 2010. Um, I had Sam sponsoring me with Fist. I was on Hondas. Um, Graham Baines was hooking me up with Honda with Genuine Oils and. Um. So mum and dad were paying for everything, spending a fortune. Apart from gloves. <laughs> yeah, but like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. everything else. Yeah, if you my, had to be sponsored by like one thing. So I'm just yeah. I'm just trying to it set the be don't be gloves. They're thirty <laughs> fucking dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to just trying to set the scene like because there's so many dudes in this position. Yeah. And 
you know, and, like and, the and, options and let me, on, and aren't really on the table for no, you to race motocross sort no, of thing. No, you know, I was the, I'm just going to set this one because there's so many dudes in that mm, that realm, position. and it was definitely the best fun years of racing ever with mum and dad, and and you just make it happen. So we had, um, you know, Joel and Bernie were sponsoring us some gear. Yeah, you know, like not much. You know, just just you know, we weren't anything special either. You know, we weren't. You know, world champions wasn't, then, wasn't, so wasn't Australian champion. Yeah, no, you, you so know, you were oh, six. Good, we were good guys though. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what that's how we figured it too. You know, yeah. we, we were always proud us prided ourselves on being good people. So, you know, you kind of expect some support, but that's not how it works in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> Until like recently, everyone's changed their whole ideology. I feel like it has come around a bit. Yeah, eh? I think it has big mm. time. Well, even like for I'm going to give a bit of a plug here. Fox on the weekend, they were like, "Do you want some gear for the weekend?" And I was like, fuck yeah. And it's like, what's that going to do for them? You know what I mean? But it's like, they just... I was new up third sponsors. Right? I did get third. Tough up, tough up, tough up. No, but it's like, but I think it's just the relationships now. Like, I think people just genuinely appreciate, like, because I feel like back in, say, 2010, it was just like throwing stuff at these kids that yeah. were like the top dudes. And, and it's like, and what return do you see? If like, because a lot of them were little fucking dipshits. Well, let's let's look at 2010 and who is still racing today. Yeah, dude, good there point. Like not Sam many. Duncanson's not racing. Ty's not racing. Um, let's look under 19s class, heavy class. You know, no, like so we got racing. like Cameron Dillon, Michael Phillips, and another dude from New Zealand, uh, Ross Beaton, Harley Quinlan, yeah, uh, Keisha, yeah. yeah. Um, Oh, there's just some. Uh, Stike was in that one. Stike. No, no, he was no, older. He was older. He was that year older, gone. wasn't he? Yeah. Just jumped up. Um, Hamish Harwood and all these, all these like ha- such a quality yeah. of, not Hamish Harwood. Dobbin, no. right? Hamish Dobbin. Dobbin. Yeah. So we're talking like serious campaigners in under 19s. So that was cool era to be in under 19s. As but none of them are racing now. And uh, you know, there's not many of them racing yeah you got dylan long dylan long luke clout and all these guys from like just a couple of years Mm. you know before and they were after you yeah after sorry after and um you know that's that's pretty disappointing to see yeah whether it was just you know other people you know not everybody follows racing forever but um well i think that i don't know man like there's something weird in the like gfc of course yeah, well, dude, that that shit was real too. Like, yeah. I mean, I definitely went through through that. Like, in terms of my film work, dried up quite a lot over those years for you know, like a few months. Uh, well, but in that two thousand eight, in that time, man, like, yeah, there was months where it was like all the money stopped and yeah. people were trying to like reevaluate how it was kind of gonna but, go forward. But I guess that's the thing, and the, and the people that actually did do do well through those periods are the people that don't. Um, forever norm I guess like you look yeah. at Maddie and Maddie was like alright well the motocross thing's not really working for me let's have a little dabble it off road and see how I go and he just killed it yeah and so like that's what I mean so like when did you figure out like oh fuck I'm just an animal well so we we're doing that that series with um, MX Nationals we're having a red hot crack at that you know travelling around here there and everywhere um, and then we sort of got to the end of the season and mum and dad are starting to evaluate how much money they've spent mm. you know, a lot of time to it's stressful when you're racing and uh, it's not till you look back upon that it's actually the best times ever but it's stressful you in know, the moment yeah. everybody's got so much passion and effort and everything's going on um, so yeah dad's dad's like oh let's go and do the four day in orange oh, right yeah yeah and that was a cool event I ended up finishing second in e1 and cleaned up the final moto so that was wicked track and everybody seeing it it was like oh damn this yeah. kid's legit yeah, yeah I, was, I was really hanging it out you know so that was cool and um and then after that everyone goes oh you know it suits a motocrosser and this yeah, and that yeah. and normal stuff wouldn't be very good in the technical stuff so we went and done the wild wood extreme enduro and cleaned that up <laughs> <laughs> on a motocross bike. Uh-huh. So that sort of, we you know, we wanted to show, that's all, we're, you know, we're always out there to prove ourselves. So that was cool. And Jeff Ballard, I was actually up there riding in Newcastle with Ando doing supercross. And I was friends with Jess Gardner and Mackenzie Tricker and a heap of like legends from up there in, in Sydney. They invited me to come for a bit of a trail ride and I met 
Dave Zollner, who's Jess's stepdad, and he just put forward that, hey, why don't you come and do enduro? Because um, obviously I told him that old man had the pressure on me to to either you get, know, get, get a, a factory ride, or, ride yeah. or I'm going to pay you to do a certain amount of money just to just to do your own thing. And that's not what you want to hear. You know, you want to hear that let's go racing no matter what. And yeah, I think he would have, but it was just that reality of, hang on, this ain't going to last forever. Let's make something happen. And I got in touch with Jeff Ballard and he was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. And he, you know, he took a shot on me. You know, he took a bit of a risk putting me on and uh, it paid off. So we had a good year. The first year I went and done enduro, I rode a 475 cc Yamaha in E3. <laughs> so it was it was a pretty... It's a lot of bike. It was a big bike for a 17 year old. Um, and it ended up doing really well. Um, finished third overall in the championship, won E3 and was only, you know, a scratch off, you know, getting to the front there. Toby had had a big injury during the season. Mm. I was the only one to really start pushing him then. Um, you know, we're swapping test times and then he just had a simple little mistake and cleaned up a tree really fast. And that was probably my first touch of how dangerous it really was. Yeah. And that scared the crap out of me because, you know, seeing him on the ground. And you know how good he is too. Absolutely. Yeah, he's a, he never makes a mistake. Yeah. So I've come across him on the ground. Um, that was in Callington, South Australia, Sand Race. So, like, we're talking the boys are really moving and, you know, everybody's just clicking gears and linking it all together. It was really cool. He's hit this tree out of the blue that he shouldn't have hit, just got a little bit cross-rutted, you know, just going way too hard. Hits the tree, goes down, and, you know, he's making all sorts of horrible noise on the ground. So did you stop for him? Yeah, I've stopped. I pulled up and um, I threw my bike off to the side of the track and I'm there and I'm just like, dude, just just concentrate on breathing just stay away just keep breathing because I'm like I've got no idea about this stuff by then I'm 17 and yeah. naive to everything that could go wrong um, Toby was no stranger to an injury by then of course but um, so I've grabbed my bike and put it over him because he's laying in this like big sand rut so that if anyone comes along they're going to hit my bike because you know yeah. I nearly hit him because I was coming through as fast as I could and uh, so then we've got guys dodging me dodging him and still going flat out through the trees and I'm just I'm just then I'm just like whoa this is scary stuff you know and then a few legends come along a few level headed dudes and they've pulled up and you know we got him out of there but um, so that was my first year in enduro you know it's a f- bit of a wake up call there with Toby crashing you know it's you know, not everybody's what did he in. hurt then so he done his ribs and and something like maybe oh, I want to say back but it was like the ribs in mm. heap of ribs and punch at a lung so it was, it was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a lung because he was sort of breathing weird and looked weird on the ground. Like it was pretty nasty. Yeah. Um, and there was nothing I could do to help him other than just a bit of comfort, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so. And so you basically went from that and then you did a second year with Jeff, right? Yeah, I did. And uh, we raced a, like a new bike. It was a fuel injected 450. Um, and I just, we just couldn't come, I couldn't come to terms with it. It was like a, um, I loved the motocross model. Um, and then this new model was like they'd just almost come out with it too soon and there was just something about it that sometimes it would just be unsettling and you'd crash and mm. just had my being a bonnet like more of a mind of its own than you'd want a bike to have yeah and it was just, there was nothing wrong it was the most reliable you know, couldn't kill it even when the days when I was training I fall off I just want to kill the thing you know when you're 18 you don't give a shit and you just hold on the limiter or like one time I drowned the thing <laughs> I started I got it started up and I just held on the limiter and then I was got over that and rode home and <laughs> you know what I mean it was like typical Yamaha reliability and anyway so it didn't didn't go to plan that year and I just had my B in a bonnet and you know you got so much to prove it's like oh, I just want to win I've got to win and yeah, you know Toby was off doing bigger and better things then and you know you always you know he's the top guy you want to be with him or you know at least, at least challenge, kind of follow, you want to challenge yeah. him you know yeah. and, and then you went to Europe straight after that right yeah, so Merriman was my teammate, Stefan. Oh, uh, multi no time Multi-time yeah, yeah, world yeah. champion. And he was so humble. Like, you would never know. Like, I didn't have any idea about him when I first got the team. It was just yeah. like a little short guy and he races in enduro. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool, you know. I guess. <laughs> and then he was sort of like hanging around a bit and he'd just go off on the trail and do some stuff and I'd follow him and anything he'd done, I'd want to do it. And uh, so we kind of had a liking to each other straight away because it was like the same sort of stuff on the bike. and Yeah. And um, 
I just tried to like rub shoulders with him a bit because he is he was the the man the best yeah he's freaking five time world champion four times enduro one times trials yeah so from a different background um so rub shoulders with him and, I, and he was riding the same bike as me and we couldn't make it work um how we wanted it to what bike was that a husky it was a wr 450 oh Yamaha, okay yep and we just couldn't make it how we wanted to for that series and you know you know the drill every yep. bike's a good bike how you make it and we just couldn't make it how we wanted it mm. so i said oh what do i do and he just goes go to europe <laughs> and he goes just go to europe man and I, he's just said to me don't muck about here any longer he goes just go if you think you can go and you can live away from home get out mm. and i was just like oh it's just such yeah, if he's saying it, he ne- he never. He's the kind of guy that. Yeah, he's would, just not like a fluffer. No, he would not say anything unless he meant it. Like you ask him a question, he'll go away. He won't even answer. He'll just walk away and then come back later with what with he thinks. The answer, yeah. It's just like oh, he's such a quirky dude, you know. So he told me that. So I took that on board and and talked to Paul Feeney, who was our husky yep. importer, absolute golden guy as well. And uh, that kicked off my first European adventure um, with husky. First race was in Argentina, so I'd never met the team, didn't even know what anybody's face looked like. And I got there and um, Maddie Sestler and you House Alman and picked me up from the airport. And they're just Maddie's like still one of my, you know, best mates. He's a Finnish dude. And so is Yuha, sorry. And um Yuha's he's pretty cold, but he's a funny guy as well. He's won a bunch of world titles though, right? Yeah, more than a bunch. So <laughs> I think I think he's like nine time world champion, so So he can ride. Yeah, so it's pretty cool he's to get okay. picked up by those guys at the airport when you're just yeah. you know, a young dude and I suppose it's pretty cool when you're an old dude too. <laughs> <laughs> if we're being honest. Yeah, so we got there and um you know, like, oh here's your gear and it's like monster energy, Husqvarna gear, and you're like, Oh my god, this is so cool, best pro, day ever. Pro grip. Here's a here's a new aero helmet you know with a monster logo and it's like oh, i got a new sponsor and you know coming from you know what i was doing to that it's just like man i've made it this is sick and that was sort of just the start of the journey and yeah it was cool so you won the first year which was the junior class right oh yeah so anyway back to my bad storytelling <laughs> um argentina was cool um so i never met him they give me like salvini's practice bike from the year before you know typical italians they weren't going to invest in me unless i was yeah. doing any good and <laughs> blanket <laughs> statements we love them <laughs> yeah so I went out the first day I finished fifth and then on the first day that's so sick yeah and that was that was like fifth and everyone's like a bit excited because I did a couple of good tests and stuff and I was like oh yeah wicked and went out the next this day this Australian guy might be okay yeah 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 they love me because I went out in the, in the super test you know the night before and I was so nervous and I just hit the first table top. I was like I've got to do a whip <laughs> <laughs> I've got to throw down so I just hit it and piffed it, you know. I was like, I'm <laughs> the only one to do it. And I nearly didn't bring it back, but oh, I made yeah. it, you know. And everyone was just like, the crowd was just loving it. So I was like, it was already on a massive high from the start, just from that one whip. And um, <laughs> I got to pride myself on it. I got a good photo. <laughs> and um, so first day I went fifth. The second day I finished third. I was on the podium. The whole team was on the podium. And then because we're in South America, they had the, you know, the monster trucks monster girls and we had a big monster party after the race so it's just like gone from australia where everything's so strict and so regimented mm. and then go there and then the whole team's at this party getting loose and everybody was there's no it. such thing as the fun police in europe no oh in argent yeah in, in south america that's right so then all of a sudden we've just this whole lifestyle you know just realized we got this whole thing going on and it was just like <sighs> It must have blown your mind eh, as a kid. It was unreal. I was just like, oh, I've made it. You know, I was like, happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine. Wait, what time are you going to go? 3.30. Oh, 3.30? Oh, fuck yeah. we got like 14 20, minutes. We've got 25 minutes. Oh, what's your time, Sam? No, we're going to go by my clock, mate. Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, so I guess like to... I, I mean, fuck, we could talk for like literally well, Basically, hours. he went from... He won the... So won, won the first title with Husqvarna. The first year. Which yeah. was which is mad. Um, then KDM brought Husqvarna from the Italians, mm. so I was left with nothing. And then I was sort of scratching for a ride, like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? I didn't know to talk to anybody at KDM because I didn't know him. I yeah. didn't need to know him. So then I spoke to Fabio Farioli, and he's just like, oh, and I'm just like at this point where 
if I don't get a ride with him, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, I'm back home. And that wasn't where my dream was heading in my head. He's like, what do you need? And I'm like, I just need this to do it. You just pay me this so I can get there and do it. And he just smiled at me and goes, no, I think you're worth more. And he, he gave me what he thought. And he looked after me and said, I'll, give you, I'll give you a car. What team was this for? So it was this factory KTM. Okay. <laughs> and uh, he's like, you'll need a car. So it's a DHL factory KTM. Yeah, like right. the proper team. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah, we're not talking outrageous money or anything, but he's just like, you know, you're going to do it. You're going to need everything to be right. So he's like, you'll need a car. Rudy can be your, your guy. Mm. He's a close friend of mine. Rudy took me training every day and to the gym and, you know, give me a, a home. Like I went to his family, we had tea and stuff like that. So Fabio tied me in with a really good package straight off the bat. So what I thought was going to be just suck it and see ended up being a really good like relationship. Like best case scenario pretty much. That's right, especially for a young guy heading over there. That was best case scenario, best support group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's like the thing that people take for granted like even with me living in the States for so long like you come home and it's like fuck you got your mum that can help you you got your dad that's there helping you prep your bike and your brother can pick up the slack when you got some shit that you can't do and if you need someone to fucking dog sit you got your sister you like got all your mates around. all your mates are there it's just like it's so like I if you would have told me when I went to America that like oh, the biggest thing you're going to struggle with is being alone. I would have been like, no, I don't give a fuck. I'll make friends and like, oh, no, that won't be an issue. No, but like, man, it's the support network that you just, you just don't realize how important it is until you don't have it. No, nah, it's so lonely and everybody's asleep when you're awake. Yeah, dude, for yep. sure. <laughs> yep. And that was probably the biggest thing I've struggled with, especially the last two years, you know, I had some stuff going on, struggling with a few different things, you know, a bit of anxiety and stuff like that, especially when the bike wasn't good. You know, you just you just be so frustrated and so anxious. And you've got no outlet to like event. Yeah. No outlet. And um, for example, like I've always had my girlfriend cat with me, so she's just been awesome, such an angel. She just hangs out and she knows I'm stressed. We just go and do something. We go and grab a coffee, an orange juice, gelato. Yeah. You know, always food food related with me. <laughs> but no, we just hang out and she she just control it. And you know, this year I went over with a mate of mine. He's a you know he's a top mechanic and and an all round good guy. Um, which was Fudge, Ben Burrell's old man. Ben's a bit of an enduro superstar from Australia. Oh, won, yeah. won a whole bunch of stuff um, as a junior and then senior and then went off farming. He's like best, like really good friends with Ty and, yeah, right. you know, he's just a, he's a really good, anyway, good guy. Went over there with him. Um, as good a guy as he is and whatever, he never, never went over. He's, you know, he's always had good intentions, but it just wasn't the same. You know, you're there with a dude. Yeah you wake up and you're talking to a dude, you go to bed, you're saying goodnight to a dude and it's yeah. just like... You can't have sex with him when you want. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's a big thing. You know? <laughs> and, and like, and, and you know, as an older gentleman, you, you kind of like, you got you still got to say the right thing and do the right you thing. You, respect you can't just and... talk absolute rubbish, which we're all, we yeah, all, we all, all like to. want to do. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just want to just say something out of school and, and yeah. just go and like, like your girlfriend knows you just talk you know just g'ing her up you know yeah and it's just good to get that stress out you say it and you're over it yeah yeah when well, you can't say that so anyway just all the little things um which probably helped this year fall apart a bit more as much as we tried to set it up where it you know he couldn't be as helpful as he wanted to be because he couldn't get the equipment we wanted and and just stuff like that so um yeah definitely the biggest thing is like being lonely because yeah it's fucked yeah and also in two people it's really hard to stay at people's houses and crash on the floor yeah because those have traveled europe you know that people don't have massive houses and five acres like we we all do in australia Mm. so i think too like the the other thing as well is like you end up investing a lot of time in people that aren't really like the right people they're just like the people that are right there if that makes sense and like I mean I definitely know I got sick of that shit like even with like ex-girlfriends and stuff where I'd be like putting in all this time with this chick and I'm like I don't fucking want this but it's like it's just I've got no I don't have I a got crew. nowhere to go like what else would I like I'm with these people because I'm fucking lonely but it's like if I was at home would I be with these same people no you yeah. know so it's like it's like that that kind of stuff it's like I don't think you can really put a value on being around the right people as well as just being around people in general yeah and also when i I made that decision to come home 
you know, I was already hit my head and that, that was probably the yeah. last, you know, it was a straw that broke the camel's back because injuries are here and all there that happen and they suck. But it was just like, I was, I was so unhappy. I'd rather, I'd rather, I was just like, if I've got to go and mow people's lawns or, which isn't a bad job anyway, because it's pretty satisfying. But if I've, got, <laughs> if I've got to go and do something I hate, like as in, in my head, if I've got to go and serve people at the, the local supermarket, I don't care. Yeah, I'll make it happen just to go and be with people I like and yeah and that was a big step for me I think as a person because it's just like I always give advice to kids and people like if you're not happy just change you know do this yeah. and that and you say all the right things and then you just do yourself in like do the yeah. wrong by yourself all the time just to you know and you try and say the right things and you know I was pissing myself off I'm just like you know stand by what you really mean I'm like okay just go home and the team was like mega pierced and, you know, all that sort of normal rubbish that, you know, not rubbish, all the normal well, yeah, stuff that happened. follows that yeah. that situation. Um, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to go home and disappear. So if anyone's been following me on social media, there's been li- very little to follow in the last three months. You know, I disappeared <laughs> and, you know, I haven't made a cracker since I stopped racing, but... You know, I haven't spent much. I haven't. You yeah. Know, you just you become so wasteful too when you're making money. Yeah. You know, you you don't make a lot of money racing, but you make enough that. You, and then there's a lot you, like you people can, are giving you, can you pay clothes, your bills. and but people are giving you clothes. They're yeah, giving you bikes. Still got a couple giving, of good sponsors. Yeah. yeah and it's, it's like I was talking to Sam today, and he's like, even you use the littlest amount of gloves out of everybody. I, and he's got I the do first all the pair riding. I gave him. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and I think I'm pretty wasteful. You know, like a pair of gloves, and and you know, like. They will just have a little hole in them, and I'll just be like, oh, "I'll either give them to my mates, or, mm. or, um, or just sit them in the bottom of the gear bag, you know." And even less now that you know I haven't had any sponsors or anything, I've just been you know pretty careful with my money, yeah. and it's just been such a good wake up call. And you know, you you fix on what's really important, and I'm just just feeling really good, really light, and and happy. Yeah, yeah. And so, what's the plan? Like, what what's some of the brainstorming that you guys done? Are you going to do another round in? like another lap around Australia racing or do you think you're going to try and get back to Europe but on like a better setup? No, I don't think that it was really the setup. Oh, well, <laughs> you could dive into that one, but it's not worth opening that can of worms. But yeah, um, the, the goal going forward is I want to promote racing. And like you said, we, we can be bashful against the MX Nationals and that, but unless we can be part of the solution, it's, it's mm. you know, it's so which is so hard to do because you want to express your ideas and everything. So my idea is that we can promote positive riding, get some more bums on seats because there's so many people with motorbikes in the shed yeah. that aren't getting them out. And, they're you know, I just I just know how good I feel when I ride and talk to other guys who ride. You know, they go, oh, I've got a bad back. And then when I ride, I don't have a bad back. And, you know, I've got anxiety. But when after I go ride and I feel good, you know, it's just like let's get the let's get everybody back out on bikes and get a sense of community that we don't have that um, I think the current um, riders and current best riders in Australia aren't promoting. You know, everybody's all about themselves and I'm not going to say everyone's selfish, but it's just like there's just not that positive investment that goes like back yeah, into the it's just sport. like on the weekend where everyone had a good time. Didn't matter who you were, whatever. You didn't feel under anybody or over or it's just... You know, and i just got this this feel from especially from everything now is so it revolved around social media and and it's just like oh it's just so wrong it's not what it's all about i just don't get this good vibe from it and it, it'd just be so so many little things to change people's attitude and and make a good event and and i think a lot of it is people don't do anything for free yeah and, and that's that's how it's got to be you know i don't expect anything for nothing and um yeah maybe we need to look at who's making a dollar out of it all and maybe the people we think are making a dollar out of it being the most generous and you know let's try and figure out you know a strategy where everyone gets their bit out of it whether it's satisfaction or or money you know because we've all got to eat and and we've all got to achieve things that we want to do and um you know a little bit of a restructure and a little bit of a reminder of why we do it and and uh, try and try and bring everybody and get some more bums on seats because also if we don't ride they're going to lock it up anyway yeah you know if we're not using it they're going to lock out the land and it's gone forever so 
just a just a few things we've been brainstorming is getting some trail rides together getting some adventure riding doing some sort of coaching on different levels no yep. not just professional level just you know just just trying to like i guess give back to like the grassroots level of it right? we always talk about the you know the transmoto events and how good they are and all that kind of stuff you know what we always talk about you know and, and maddie sort of like you know wants to that's sort of what the feel that he wants to bring back yeah to a bunch of stuff so we've sort of been talking about a bunch of bunch of stuff and who knows what will happen you know you know how it goes you'll make shit happen you always do yeah. but yeah i mean it's cool and especially like i guess wrapping this day in the dirt uh catch up episode um of the podcast on like it's a good message because i feel like that's the day in the dirt message like the message oh, yeah, that you exactly. want to spread is like we lived that this weekend there was a shitload of people that went no one left there not having a good time and you know i already want to do it again yeah and it's monday yeah and we already want to do it better yeah you know and that's that's one thing about so race good. and it always wants to make you better yourself but when you're not having fun Dude, it, we, we weren't even out of the gate yeah. Like we were literally like, you know, where the KDM truck was. Yeah, there was the fence. Like before that, we're yeah. driving through there, and Maddie just looks at me and goes, "Oi, next year we'll bring the sickest setup. I'm gonna get all these bikes." Like and it was, very, we weren't even off the property. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> sick. That's how you know, like you had a good weekend. Well, that's it. And I mean, everyone killed it. Like all the guys from Lusty, all the guys from Three Crowns, all the guys from Bushy, everyone. Yeah. Like, the dudes from Fast House coming over from the US. Absolutely. And I'm pissed with rain. And oh, even yeah. even down to Toby doing a good setup out the back by himself. And that's he, part of the show uh, for the people. Pete, Pete washed. Oh, Pete was the show. Pete, <laughs> Pete was the one run it. Liz was feeding everybody. That's like standard, man. Like when people, it's so funny when like people come into like the crew that haven't been in there yet. And they're like, oh, your mum and dad, like this weekend they did this. I was like, no, no, no. That's like been every weekend <laughs> for the whole ever. <laughs> like, that's just standard. Yeah, that's they're like, keeping the boat afloat. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I, it was so good. One of the coolest things that I got out of the weekend was actually talking to Pete. And Pete was like, oh, man, I was so chuffed to meet Maddie. And I thought he was taking the piss. And I was like, oh, yeah, Team Tassie. Yeah, we're all cool from down there. He's like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm a big fan. I've been, always watched his stuff and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then I told Maddie in the car, he goes, no, I'm pretty. Oh, I'm actually pretty chuffed. Like Peter's a bloody legend. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's hanging out with Toby. He's hanging out with these big dogs, and it's like he came up to me. He's like, "No, oh, it's a real, real nice to meet you, man. I've been following your racing and that." And I was just like, "Yeah, I didn't expect that." You know, it was, yeah, it was it was pretty humbling. It was, well, it was that's nice. one of the things. You know, so many people, you know, they don't realize what Maddie's actually done. I mean, I I knew that through there an, Sam. Is there an, is there another Australian that's won four world titles? No, probably not. No. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you don't want... I don't want to push my own barrier either, you know? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't help that I've been away, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm not one to beat my chest, you know? No, I, I'm I don't. not saying that, but what I'm saying is, like, it's pretty crazy, like... Yeah, if you put it into perspective of, like, what you've done, and I guess even this, the position Actually, that you're the, at, you know? one of the best things that I've ever received on my phone... <laughs> was, <laughs> no, they just remembered this was at the world champions banquet so maddie's sitting <laughs> sitting on this table <laughs> and he's taking selfies <laughs> and ryan villapoto's sitting like a row behind him and he's taking all these selfies with him with villapoto and he's like drawing mullets on him and, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> and stuff sending them to me on snapchat i'm like how good's that yeah. you know what i mean like he's just there getting he's his like, awards Dude, i'm yeah. just sitting at this bloody table with villapoto look at me go yeah and to be fair, he was one of the best dudes there. <laughs> yeah, he's a cool dude. It's it's cool. It's cool when you go to like a, a big thing like that, and there's all these guys, and you're like, oh wow, that's such and such, and oh. yeah. And then then they just come and I go, oh, hey hey dude, what's happening? And you're like, oh nothing, you know. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's been really <laughs> starstruck, hey, like a movie star. For example, on the weekend there was the the guy from Silverchair there, and he was just mingling right in with everybody. Well, who was the guy, the bass guitarist from Silverchair? No shit. Yeah, because in that. Oh, I didn't know that. That's fucking so awesome. So you would, you didn't yeah. know that because he's such a legend. Probably drunk a beer with him. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that. thousands of people, none of which should I remember their no, names. No, no. <laughs> so I would have been none the wiser and then they told me and I'm looking at him and I'm like, oh, yeah, it is too. Yeah, that's I've crazy. seen him before, you know, and yeah. he's, he's a superstar, like yeah. a real superstar and we're just like, we're just hooning around the dust. And just all came he's, on. He's like a mega dude. Well, but boys, yeah. we did it. 
Yep. We caught up. I didn't think... Thanks to absolutely everyone for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, final yeah. final thoughts on Day in the Dirt to wrap up this episode, a, Sam. A double plus. Double, a double plus, a double Maddie. Plus. Can't wait to go back. Can't wait to bring a crew. Mm. Yeah, oh, well, I'm gonna, semi-trailer from I'm, I'm going... I'm going to take Toby down next year oh. on, <laughs> on setup. On set on up, set yeah, up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. He's I got. Gonna, he's I got. You were talking Coupe de Gras. Nah, he's got seventy-five minutes. He turned up there with the flashiest Patriot Camper, the yeah, new Forby, <laughs> all the fruits. So next year we're gonna come up with something. Even if it's budget, it's gonna be better. Yeah, let's go. Coming like, for you, Tobes. Wait, let's go for Mad Max next <laughs> no. year. Because hey. I felt like the weekend was kind of like Mad Max, wasn't I, it? Yeah, yeah, if it had Mad Maxi vibe. So let's make uh, yeah. let's get a theme. Let's go Mad Max next year. Team I reckon. of the theme. Yeah, we we will be the team of the theme. I'll ride more next year. I won't drink as much. Probably will. Fucking hell. I'm yeah. making promises I can't keep. Yeah. So I'm already thinking bunk beds. Oh. Yeah, like screw them together. We'll have bunk beds outside. Yep. With some kind of roof on it. We're not we're not we're not there to um not there to freeze did, and did, get wet. Didn't you didn't you like sleeping in the high house? Not there to Oh, I did. I did enjoy that, but we, you know, <laughs> like we said, we're not there to lick post stamps, so we're gonna we're gonna have a red hot crack. We'll come up with something, and you know, we're gonna try and we'll do it on a budget as well because yeah. you know that that's level playing. That's where it's at. Yeah, I tell you what, old um, what, what's his name? What's his that had like the bushy? Was it was that bushy setup? Was bushy setup with the ping pong table. I thought it was another guy, but no, that was no, full was just bush. Fuck me. Well, it was Bushy's Weird. crew. What a it lord. It was Bushy's crew. Ah, okay. Fish fingered FMX shout out. Oh, so that's Bushy's deal. That's Bushy's deal. I didn't know that at all this whole time. Well, Jason, come on, man. Finger on the pulse. Bro. I'm not, yeah, I'm not in there. I'm not in there. I the thought crew. it was disgusting. There, there was boobs out and there was people <laughs> dancing on tables and dildos getting thrown at know, semis. Very, very unrespectable <laughs> behavior. In the best way. Yes. <laughs> Righto, boys. This was fucking rad. I wish we could have done it for a little bit longer. But well, you have to do another one with Matty and yeah. talk through his Brazilian World Championships. I know, man. Point. It's so crazy. You're so humble, too. It's pretty but, amazing yeah, to no see. One, no one really... People do like it, man. Like, I mean, I know you don't want to talk about it, but at some point you've got to realise that there's people that would like to listen to it. They don't, and they're not going to think well, that I've you're... I've heard the stories a thousand times and I'm still into it. There's a thing where you can do, like, the way you talk, like, you're a humble guy. Like, when people... You, you're not blowing your trumpet and pushing your own barrow or whatever. Like, you did what you've done and people legitimately will get enjoyment from hearing you talk about it. So I think that just the fact that you are so cautious not to sound like a fuckhead <laughs> is... <laughs> you means, the, so, means you've so got to cautious not to you know reveal what, anything. You, you know what? Some, something that really shows Matt's personality is... Matt, put your wrist up, please. With your thing on. Yeah, he's still frothing. No, no, look, he's still got his yeah. band on. I said to him, oh, do you want me to cut that off? He goes, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, wouldn't well, have, I, I wouldn't have cut mine off if I didn't have I, to go honestly, to They would have taken it off me anyway. Honestly, I was just showing off. You know, we're up at the Gold Coast, all the servers, everyone's got their like false festival wristbands on. I thought, you know, I, I might tune in here. Day Someone day might day. ask me which festival I've been to and I'll have to be like, oh, no, I've actually been racing motocross, man. Like, I'm a badass. What's up? Badass. What's up? Well, yeah, we'll get you back on. I, I hope you spend a bit more time on the Goldie with this dude. Um, you definitely... No, he has to now. Yeah, yeah because... Yeah, yeah no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'd be fucking stoked if you spend a bit more time. Sam, bloody love you. It's your 500th Thanks, podcast appearance, as usual, killing see next, it. See you next week. Um, and again, yeah, Sam's going to give away some gloves from this episode. There's this bell helmet that I'm going to give away which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, shout out to Gaz for doing that. It's pretty sick. He literally like, he was trying to give away helmets and then he's like, hey, you should just give away one on the podcast. And I was Me like, Me and Maddie got done. matching helmets. You did? Team Tassie. Yeah, oh. McGrath replicas. Oh, that show time. Sick. Yeah, so yeah, sick. Yeah, those things are sick. So pumped on it. Because right, I've boys. got the original one too. You got to go. We got to go. Otherwise, we, you're going to be like, airport, like right we could now. do this for fucking oh, ages. Thanks for having we'll us. We'll do it again. Cheers. Love you both. Bye. Big, Bye. big time.